Ricky Rudd is trying to find his way to Victory Lane here at the Richmond International Raceway. Check out the victory celebration by the crew as he took the checkered flag. That's that guy right there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, nobody saw you. Don't worry. Watch. He's going to look for the camera. Anybody see me? <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> The tough part is the cars were coming to the checkered flag at speed. That's why he got up so and fast. he fell over the wall onto the racetrack side of it. I think it's been a hard night for Ricky. Look at those eyes. Wow. Well, let's see how Looney Tunes' old victory lane is going to get. Bill Weber's right in the middle of it all, Bill. Well, this is an early birthday present for Ricky Rudd. He turns 45 years old on September 12th. He's the ninth driver this season, the age of 44, to go to Victory Lane. So to clarify that, nine races this season have been won by a driver that's 44 years old. Again, Ricky will turn 45 on September 12th here in his home state of Virginia. Here comes his wife, Linda, into Victory Lane to greet her husband. And... Uh, Ricky getting ready to climb out and really savor this victory. And here he is in his home state of Virginia, Ricky Rudd, in victory lane at Richmond. And I'll see if I can lose my way in here. Congratulations, gentlemen. Good job. We got a lot to talk about. Congratulations, a big win for you here in Virginia. Early birthday present for you. Yeah, yeah it really is. I tell you, it was, uh, you know, Texaco, Haviland, Florida, Fatback, McSwain, all these guys, Raymond, uh, Fox, guys, uh, Hoyt over, all these guys that work hard on this thing every week. Uh, we had a heck of a race car today, and it uh, looked, like, uh, looked like we weren't going to win it. Had somebody kind of rough us up a little bit, and looked like we weren't going to get back to the front in time. As it turns out, I was lucky I saved it. It was just a pure miracle, and uh, gave us a chance to come back and uh, win the race. Well, let's review some things. Your pass of Rusty Wallace. Um, you know what? Rusty broke loose. Um, it looked like I hit him. Uh, Rusty was real bad on that restart. I'm not really sure he was holding the pack up. And, uh, I mean, we were running inches off each other, but uh, honestly can say, and I think Rusty will tell you, I didn't touch him. Uh, he was just trying to put the hammer down really hard. He knew he couldn't lift. Uh, he broke loose and uh, didn't get it back, you know. How about you win the 29, Ricky? Well, that was, uh, you know, that was just a friendly little uh, short track bump and run there. Uh, you know, he, he sort of... Uh, sort of gave me a cheap shot. I thought early on, he kept jacking me up in the straightaway, and I don't like that a whole lot. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, hit somebody, move on, go on, but don't just sit there and ride their bumper. But uh, you know, it all worked out. Uh, you know, he wasn't. Uh, I was a little mad at the time, but uh, we came back once. So I kind of cooled off a little bit, and you know, I didn't know what to expect on the cool down lap, and actually come up and congratulated me. So it was pretty neat. How did you save that car? Uh, well, I'm just so daggum good. <laughs> <laughs> I love a guy that's honest. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm going to be real honest. I haven't got a clue. Uh, it was one of them deals. I was looking where I was going to hit the fence uh, backwards, and uh, it, it, it gathered it up. Uh, you know, I guess the good Lord must have steered it straight because I didn't have much to do with it. Ricky, at what point were you aware the 24 was out of contention? Well, I knew pretty early on. I, you know, I was running about fourth or fifth when he, uh, when, he, when he wrecked, and I knew it was a pretty hard hit. I couldn't see him hit, but I saw the momentum as he was going up the racetrack. I knew that was, uh, I knew it was going to be a hard hit, but... Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, don't wish those guys any bad luck. They've had a heck of a year. We've had a heck of a year. You know, we just had more mechanical failures than they have. Uh, and, and Jeff's been running awfully good every week. You know, he's dominated almost every race. And, uh, you know, tonight it was our turn to win and uh, gained a few points. And we'll see how it shakes out. Back home in Virginia. Congratulations. Getting to come at a better racetrack. Thank you. Ricky Rudd wins in Richmond with the same car he took to victory lane at Pocono. Let's check in with Marty. We're with Rusty Wallace. And uh, Ricky Rudd said that he felt like your, looked like your car got loose. Is that what happened? Yeah, he, he didn't hit me. Uh, I just got loose. I really did. I uh, put an extra pound of air in the right rear tire of that last pit stop just because it was a little pushy before that. And I figured, well, for the last 20 or 30 lap run, we need a little air in the right rear tire to get the thing going. All it is just made it really loose. And so uh, I just, he got behind me coming off of turn two and just took all the air off the rear spoiler. That, and it, I just went up in smoke. And I tell you what, I thought I was going to spin it clear down the back straightaway, but I didn't. And I was able to save it. And it's just so dejecting to lead that many laps, the first race here and the second race here, and finish fifth. We had a car that should have won this race by 15 car lengths, but it didn't happen. Next time I'll just quit messing with that right rear tire. It, it was good, but it took like 15 laps to get the car going, and I just didn't feel like we could sacrifice that at the end. And uh, I would have never thought that would have made it real, real loose, and it did. Well, I almost hate to say this, but in the last four races here, he's led 867 laps and won none of those races. To Matt Yoakum.
And Kevin Harvick scores his best career Winston Cup finish here at Richmond in a patented short track kind of night. First off, how hard did you hit the 28? Well, I, I, we aired our tires up there at the end to give ourselves a chance at the get-go, and it was scooting the tires pretty bad, and I just kind of misjudged and, and hit him a little bit harder than... Uh, I wasn't planning on hitting him at all, but I just got into him a little bit, and he saved it. And, and uh, when you get into somebody that late in the race on a short track, you got to expect a little bit in return. And he knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, and... Uh, you know, our car had, had fallen off a little bit, and his car was pretty good. So I was the first one over to congratulate him. He did what he had to do to win the race, and, and uh, it's great when you can race with people. And, and uh, I'm just glad I didn't take him out because I didn't mean to do it. And even Dale Earnhardt Jr. gave you a few bumps coming down pit road? Yeah, he just he just does that. Every time he's behind me, he just bumps me. And plays. That was all in fun. Yeah. If uh, we were at uh, Las Vegas testing, the first time I was in my bush car and the cup cars and stuff were out there, and he knocked the rear bumper cover off my car in testing. So we just play around. We like to have a good time. Back in May, Kevin Harvick finished 17th, one lap down tonight. He almost picks up the victory, Alan. The lead changed three times in the final 23 laps of this race. Wallace to Rudd to Harvick, back to Rudd again. Ricky's in victory lane. Welcome to the Autotrader.com post-race show from the Richmond International Raceway on TNT. Post-race wrap-ups of tonight's Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. What a terrific finish this one had. Three lead changes in the final 23 laps, and it's Ricky Rudd who comes out on top to get his second win of the 2001 season. Good points nights for Rudd and Jaron after Jeff Gordon had his troubles early. Two 17 cars will finish in the lead lap. Bill Elliott, the last, he will finish the lead lap despite the problems he had running in the back of the 93 car. Kenny Wallace in for Steve Park in the Pennzoil car, 21st place tonight. A lot of guys got overtaken in a caution that came out just after they made green flag pit stops, put them well behind. And you see Jeff Gordon gonna finish 36th tonight. Got bumped by Sterling Marlin and crashed in turn three, racing for third at lap 35. 117 laps down. Ron Horner, they had a great run started tonight. Had some trouble over in turn two, crashed out of the race. Mike Wallace on the front stretch and Brett Bodine also out of the race. Dave Burns, just moments ago, spoke with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale, you hopped out of the car, looked very tired. You worked hard out there tonight, right? I was just uh, kind of frustrated. Got, like, we really couldn't get the car to turn in the middle, in the middle of the corners, uh, to be able to keep up with the guys that were leading. Uh, it was a heck of a show. I had a great seat, and probably the best seat in the house. Uh, Kevin got up there and run the back of the 28, and then uh, Ricky run back by him, uh, you know, through him really. But uh, that was a, you know, a good race, and I'm congratulations, to Ricky. Uh, I'm sure it's not the first race Kevin's lost like that, and probably won't be the last, but. Uh, we needed the points, and we finished third. We'd like to win a million, but we'll go to Talladega and try again. All right, good night for him. Former, former winner here comes home third tonight. Celebration ongoing in victory lane, and the Looney Tunes are joining in. How did our Looney Tunes cars fare tonight? Well, Taz did pretty good. Everybody else kind of had a rough one. Back to Richmond with more post-race coverage in just a minute on TNT. Back at Richmond, let's take a look at our Pepsi race recap and the highlights of the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Lap number six, John Andretti was the first to have problems on the night. Got together with Jimmy Spencer, cut left front tire. Buckshot Jones got turned around off of turn number four. First of a couple of incidents he was involved in during the night. This was the big one, though. This is the headline maker right here. Sterling Marlin nipping Jeff Gordon, racing for third at lap 35. Another look at it. Gordon going to finish in 36th place. 117 laps down. Ouch. Moving ahead to lap number 93. Sterling Marlin, third in points coming in. Broke the transmission on a pit stop. Went behind the wall, lost 49 laps making repairs. He finishes in 32nd place. Elliott Sadler, one of the five drivers eligible for the million dollar bonus. If he could win tonight, that one went up in smoke against the inside wall on the back stretch. Mike Wallace gets bumped by Mark Martin. Big cloud of smoke. Somehow, about everybody makes it through okay except Wallace. Closing in on halfway. Here's the second of the incidents Buckshot was involved in. Ron Hornaday and he contact. Matt Kenseth would also be involved. 
Now the race getting down to its final laps. Things really got interesting. 23 to go. Rusty Wallace gets loose off of two. Ricky Rudd goes to the lead. 17 laps to go. Kevin Harvick up into Rudd. Harvick goes into the lead. Great save by Ricky Rudd to hang on. Now five laps to go. Turn number three, Rudd. The bump and run on Kevin Harvick. Excuse me, I'm going to victory lane. And Ricky Rudd does the victory donuts, celebrating his second win of the 2001 NASCAR Winston Cup campaign and a big night in the championship for Rudd as well, winning while Gordon finished in 36th place. Top five finishers in tonight's race, eligible for the next million dollar bonus race. Comes up at Talladega, uh, October the 21st. Earnhardt Jr., uh, excuse me, this is a look at tonight's results, I'm sorry. I was thinking ahead. But that's how they made out tonight, so the million dollars stays locked in the safe. And Rudd, Harvick, Earnhardt Jr., Jarrett, and Wallace will go for the million in Talladega, October the 21st. We're back to Richmond after this on TNT.